morning. Good morning. <laughs> we were just talking. I just knocked over the camera and the lighting <laughs> on my way to this table. And I'm like super frazzled because I was running late. My phone, my, my phone screen, you know, this has been cracked for, I mean, we're talking nine months, I think. <laughs> yeah. I've been telling you to get a new phone for a while. Like every time I look at your phone, I'm like, really? What's the deal? Real, I mean, so ratchet. I'm like, I, d- I don't know why. Well, I do know why, because I was not going to get the phone. I I wasn't just going to get a new phone screen and then get a new phone. Like I kept feeling like I was going to get a new phone anyway. So I just waited and waited and people made fun of me for nine months for having a cracked phone screen. But anyway, get the phone yesterday. something about you though. Like you don't need a new phone. You're not like chasing the next thing, which I really like. Not chasing the next thing, but I will say (laughs) since we're talking feng shui today, having a cracked phone screen is like bad chi. (laughs) I mean, I hate to like tell her, but I had like, she's been going around with bad chi for nine months. I'm so excited for you now. Yeah. You're like transitioning. Yeah. For nine months. But so now I'm feeling actually discombobulated this morning because, you know, now the phones transfer just kind of automatically in the middle of the night, like some phone fairy comes in and, but I, but now I have two phones because I'm unsure that the new phone has everything, but I do think it has everything. But I, I couldn't like print always, out my It always notes. skips a few things. So you have to like go back, like yeah. uh, like photos and things like that. It's like missing passwords, which really drives me up the wall. So I got to yeah. figure that out. But I knocked over the camera, knocked over the lighting. I wasn't sure halfway here if I brushed my teeth. And I was like, I hate did I feeling. brush my teeth? Oh, I'm on camera. Like, <laughs> so I just had a mint. I'm feeling sparkly fresh, even if I didn't uh, brush you my always teeth. look good. I mean, your teeth always look good. They look clean from here. Oh, They're thanks. Good. good. Okay. You can. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I did brush my teeth. Um, but then you were saying, so tell me this uh, like story. You got into a car crash. Long story short. I'm a very good driver, very defensive driver. Oh, and I'm like defensive. distracted talking on the phone on Bluetooth. I'm Bluetooth. Yeah, I'm Bluetooth girl. But distracted, talking on the phone. The person that was talking to me was asking me a lot of questions. I get on, I'm going south on 95. I get on the expressway by accident. I never do that because I'm always like freaked out by it a little bit. Mm Because like, where do I get off? I don't Mm -hmm. know the exits. Anyways, I see the exit going to the glades where I'm going to the, I'm going to the Pokemon. And- Pokemon. Yes. (laughs) And um, there's like this small exit and there's a very small window between like the- posts that are on the sides, you know, those pla- the yes. plastic posts. Yes. So I look over, there's a car there and I like honk because he's not letting me in. And I only have this like little space to get over or else I have to get all the way over and I have to stay on there till like Hillsboro yes, or something. Yes, yes, yes. And that's scary. It was, yeah. And also like, it sh- I should have just been like, whatever. Oh, well, I'll stay on. I wasn't in a rush or anything, yeah. but I, I decided because I'm so in a rush yeah. for, so, for no reason to speed up as I'm looking over to speed up, to pass him. And I look back in one, one millisecond and I'm running over those oh, like cones. Those con- those things, those poles. It, so I've done it too. I've done it too. Yeah. Like what? I still don't understand like why they're really there. I mean, if you get on the expressway, you're going to get charged. Yeah. You get off, you get on, char- yeah, I don't know. And this is the left side. And then you're having to like exit left, which always confuses me. Right. Right. <laughs> I don't exit left well. <laughs> right. So uh, anyways, I run them over um, and I, I blacked out. Mm. I lost control. Always great while driving, right. blacking out. Right. <laughs> I lost control. Be- um, the One of the plastic pieces got stuck under my tire in the back, lost control of the car. Don't know really how it happened, but I went from all the way from the exit lane, all the way from the express lane, all the way to the exit lane without a mark. Mm. And during rush hour traffic, wow! without a mark, without getting anyone into any accidents, without me getting into an accident, I get off, I park, I get out of my car and my hood has a humongous dent. Oh no. Humongous dent. And my uh, side mirror is completely busted off. (laughs) Great. (laughs) Now who's the ratchet one now? (laughs) (laughs) Seriously. But you know, Austin calls his, calls his people. He's the same as David Han. Yeah. He's He's like, I got a guy. guy. Yeah. He's got the guy. I like that. I I like someone who's got a guy. I know. So somebody comes over, my car's already buffed out. There's no, no scratches. The side mirror is already 
completely brand new. And then a dent guy comes yesterday and takes the dent out of my hood. Thank oh, God. Oh, wow. And didn't have to do any, like it was not cheap, but it wasn't through insurance either. Yeah. Which is nice. Oh, but be girl, careful. Be careful out there, kids. Be I, careful. Those <laughs> freaking things. So now we're going to take a deep okay. breath because <laughs> that was my story. I'm sorry. It took like 10 minutes out no, of the feng shui. <laughs> no, no. Yeah. We are talking feng shui today. Feng shui. One of my favorite uh, topics, obviously. Um, but no, it's a good one. Uh, yeah. So we just got to get into the, the mind frame of we are chill, zen people right now. <laughs> always. I'm always that way. So... I am trained in classical feng shui and that can kind of have like, feng shui has some rules, Mm -hmm. you know, it has some rules attached to it. And what I kind of feel like I've seen over the years is that the rule, people get a little scared off by the rules. So I like to feng shui for like modern situations, modern, modern families, modern homes. Yes. Functional. Uh, very intentional practices that you can you you can do without knowing anything about feng shui is kind of where um, I lean into. So I try to do a couple of things when I'm with someone feng shuiing their home, and my goals are really to be intentional with the design, incorporating all of the elements into the space. Because if there's like one element. If it's, you know, very fiery, so to speak, like reds and purples and, you know, lots of like shapes and animals, you, you kind of bit into houses like that, like a lot of animal prints, which I love, Mm -hmm. but if it's too heavy on like one element, you got to bring in some of the other elements to balance it out. And what do you mean by elements? Like, so what are those elements? Fire, Mm -hmm. water, metal, fire, water, metal. (laughs) Earth. Wood and earth. <laughs> earth <right? laughs> yeah. Pause. Hold, please. Pause. Um, so, yeah. So you want to kind of have a little bit of all of that, you know. So fire, like we just said, um, you know, the colors, pictures of sunsets, you know, things like that. Um, animal prints um, with water, blues, you know, shades of blues, very like fluid looking patterns and shapes, that kind of thing, like wavy patterns. Um, earth is, you know, ceramics could be crystals, anything like earth related, but also like earth tones. Mm -hmm. Metal is, you know, metallics, a lot of white, you know, a lot of white, a lot of gray, a lot of silver, gold, that type of thing. And wood. So wood, natural plants, Um, and things like that, which I love to add in. So you kind of want to just balance everything, you know, in the space and, and make sure it feels, and I think, I think we can all kind of be a good judge of our own personal space and feel, well, this feels nice, you know, or, Mm -hmm. oh gosh, that's too much of that color, you know? Right. (laughs) Um, I want to promote good chi and energy in the space. So good flow, not too much clutter. That's always... Uh, so important in feng shui is creating that good chi in the home. Also manifesting your goals and dreams Mm -hmm. in the space. So, you know, that could be anything like displaying pictures of a place you want to visit, you know, or a place that means a lot to you. Um, That makes sense. Yeah. Like promoting health and healing in the home too. That's so important because I think we're all... Yeah, because when you look at things that you want, it makes you happy. Yeah. It makes you feel like you're going forward. Yeah. Boosting Boosting. boosting that chi, right? Mm -hmm. So So those are the main goals. And I'll say the number one thing that you should do. I mean, we can talk manifestation. We can talk meditation, things like that. I really think one of the main things to do when you're wanting to change your life, change what's going on in, you know, whatever situation you're in Mm -hmm. is to declutter. Mm -hmm. One of my favorite topics. (laughs) So decluttering will change your life. Right. It absolutely will. I mean, I know because I, I did it. 
You did it. I did it. I got rid of a lot of stuff. Well, you kind of just probably had to do that because you yeah. moved in. Mm-hmm. Can we I talk about that? that? Yeah. <laughs> now I'm decluttering him. Right. <laughs> his stuff. <laughs> Sorry, Austin. <laughs> hey, Austin. <laughs> yeah, Jess moved in with Austin. And yeah, when you are, you're mixing two, two different oh, lifestyles. Very. Right? Two totally, I mean, if anyone has ever moved into a man's space, mm. they know. <laughs> yes. <laughs> because when I did that, I remember thinking at the time, I'm going to, this is really going to scare him if I like bring oh my all gosh. my things in. Yeah, that's, yes. Right. I'm yeah. really, I'm, I may scare him uh, away <laughs> <laughs> if I just bring in everything. So I kind of got rid of a lot of my things, which I think that the female tends to do. Right. You know, it, is we, we tend to kind of, take one on the chin and, and get rid of our things. Right. And it's easy for, easier for us to adapt. It is. Yeah. Yeah. Men surprisingly very attached to their things. Do you find that? Um, yeah. Okay. I, we're working on it. Yeah. (laughs) He's very easy and compromises very, he's, yeah. He does. He's gentle. Oh, that's good. That's good. Yeah. I remember I had this really adorable couch I mean, I don't know if a couch is adorable, but it was a nice couch and it was new and it was one of those, I don't know if you remember those like microfiber. Oh my microfiber. gosh. Remember yes, I'm kind of dating myself with in. this? It, it was, was very in. in. Until you realize like kind of everything sticks to the microfiber. Uh, you, it's- And stains, they don't come out. They don't, yeah. they really don't come out. <laughs> and then you just like wipe your hand on the microfiber and then it looks like there's a stain and it's not, it's just the microfiber. <laughs> But they were really soft though. They were soft. And I did really love this couch. It was really cute. It was really cute. It was adorable. And then I go into my now husband's space and he has a leather couch that he has been sleeping on for 10 years. I mean, he, he very worn. It's It's very worn. Actually, one of the cushions, um, constantly ripped off and he had, well, it, it had fallen off. And then he Velcro, double stick Velcro and like stuck the cushion back on, but it never failed. The Velcro would just weaken over time. And then the, the cushion would fall over. And he was like, what's wrong with it? And he was like, not getting rid of that couch, you know, it's a non-negotiable, <laughs> non-negotiable that couch. I can still picture it. And I did want to burn it. Yeah. I finally got rid of it. There's of a course. few things in our house. I want to, I would burn. Yeah. <laughs> It, like, I think you'll break him down over time, which is what I did with David. I broke him down. And then I did not, you know, we didn't get a microfiber couch. I can't remember what we got, but it was probably, his was brown. And, and in his defense, he was like, Kimberly, this hides animal hair. Yeah, multitude this, of things. This yeah. hides stains. You can wipe it because it's like this pleathery kind yeah, of- Yeah, but then what happens when you're like laying on it, you're like sticking on it? You're sticking. Because oh, in Florida, you're, you could be sweaty I, yeah. and like it's- I know. Yeah. My dad had to have a leather couch. We always had a leather couch. A leather couch. I, we had a, we had like a really beautiful couch in the, in like the living, like in the- you know, the, everyone had that one room in the house that oh, no yeah. one sat in. You can't touch. Yeah. yeah. So we had that. And then we had the living room with the leather. And my dad loved the leather. I mean, granted, it did smell really good. Like that's the one yeah. that I guess that's why I like oh, leather. Oh, you like remember that from, yeah. from childhood, the yeah. smell of it, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, always. But okay. So going back, so you broke them down? I broke them down. You don't got remember a new what couch. you got? Um, I don't remember what we got. Or- you know, those details, I don't quite remember. Hmm. Interesting. But <laughs> I did think, you know, I remember, I remember finally like moving in and being like, oh my gosh, I got rid of all my stuff. I don't have anything. And I think we got into a fight <laughs> and I like left the house and I was like, oh my God, I have nowhere to go. And I have no Nothing. stuff. Oh my God. <laughs> Like why I had that same exact thing happen to me. <laughs> and then you're like, oh no, yeah, where do I go? I go? What do I yeah, do? I no, I, I don't do? even have a chair to sit on. No, no it, chair to sit yeah. on. Good, okay. good news for us is I think things worked out. You know, we're married now, been together 18 years. So I think things worked out. It, it worked out okay. Yeah. But um, decluttering. Yeah, decluttering. It's going to change your life. And when you can declutter yourself and really get to 
the goals of where you want to go. Like I, I find this like, and I have helped people over the years declutter quite a bit and it's a very emotional process. Mm -hmm. There are absolutely emotions involved. I feel like I'm, when I'm with somebody, I'm like getting a, like a little peek into their past. I can't, yes. I can't even imagine. It's yes. And I had, I, I definitely have had some interesting experiences with that and people that don't live like a certain lifestyle anymore, mm. but you can see it kind of reflected in their closet and you're like, oh, wow, this is so interesting, you know, but they still don't want to get rid of it. But you know, to, to move toward, you know, towards the things, the, the goals that you have, like you need to let all that stuff go in the past and, and get rid of it. And there's so many different methods to mm -hmm. decluttering, like which one you can figure out which one is best for you. I do love the Marie Kondo method. I know you're pretty familiar. Yeah. Like what sparks joy, <laughs> what sparks joy, which I really love. I like, I just love that saying, because yeah. it's like, you can really put that into any part of your life, but yeah, I, I like her. Yeah. I like she's her cute. too. I know she is, a, she's adorable <laughs> and I love the sparking joy. I love the, you know, simplicity of what she does. Um, I love the file folding. Yes. I, I know that's something you love. Yeah. I am obsessed. And that's another thing. I file folded myself. So if anyone, I don't know, I wish I had like a shirt, but you know, you are folding it and you can Google it or the Marie Kondo method, but and you're putting it in like a file. You're putting it in the drawer like a file so you can see everything from the top, mm -hmm. right? Yes. And so I file folded myself and my son, my husband. No, I'm I'm good like with how I do things, mm -hmm. of course. Yeah, yeah so you can do your own things. Yeah, you do you over there <laughs> until I think he broke down over the years. Because well, he saw it being so much easier and accessible for the both of you. And then he was kind of like, all right. Yeah, so guess who file folded all of his things on his own? And was like, hey, Look and now on. never turn back. Yeah, never turn because back. It is folding. really a good method. I do file folding. Yeah. I do. The I only thing folding. I don't file fold is like my undergarments because like the only person who folds those is my, my housekeeper. And I'm like, you don't have to do that. Yeah. Folding the underwear is a little tedious. It's too tedious. <laughs> and it's like, they look so good when I'm never, they're never going to look that good again. No, because, and I think too, <laughs> you pull one of them out and gosh, the other ones just get all messed up. And, and th that's all she They wrote. do have those drawer organizer things that go with like little pods. Yes. But it's I like, like you can only have a certain size drawer. Yes. Anyways. I know that's, that's a whole thing, but I can imagine when you're decluttering someone else's home, how it can be very emotional. I yes. mean, you watch those, I know this is maybe too far off topic, but you watch those hoarding shows, which yeah. I, I actually really love. Cause I, I feel like I could totally do that. Mm. But oh, you could totally hoard or you could no. totally help someone clean oh, out. Either one, both. <laughs> okay. But, <laughs> both. Um, but I clean out, I think, I feel like I would be like very sensitive to that. Yes. An understanding of people's like space and, and the time that they took to gather all those things, you know, yes. they think they're treasures, you know? Yeah. And a lot of the hoarding can come from a emotional, a, yeah, like a trauma space. Most which of it that, does. That could be like a whole nother have you ever had, about I mean, that, yeah, I'm like, have you ever had something similar? Yes. Um, and I, I don't actually really handle that anymore, but, um, I have had some unique experiences with that and it is, it's, it's heavy. Look, it's hard for one person to handle. It is. You have to have a team. Some yeah. people don't realize that they have such issues. Yeah. But I feel like, yes, decluttering your life is a must. Yeah. You're decluttering your space and in turn decluttering your life. And I've seen that because once you get started on clothes and books mm -hmm. and things in your home, it's so much easier to say, you know what, that person or relationship or situation or hobby, maybe you just outgrown it. Like all of those things, you can just be like, it's just easier to be like, you know what? I don't think that's really doesn't serve me. I don't think me. I really need that yeah. in my life anymore. So I no. agree. Yeah. I feel, I feel, yeah, I feel that. You feel that. I feel that. Yeah. You've done it. You've I've experienced. It. I feel like you live pretty minimal. in, in minimal is minimal yeah. can have like a weird connotation, connotation, yeah. but just with the things that you love, I feel like I see that in you, that you have just the things that you need and love mm -hmm. 
And yeah, I don't, I'm not a collector. No, not a collector. No. no. Yeah. And he, Austin's not a collector either. Thank God. Yeah. You know, I mean, I do have a I think goddess, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I do have a collector on my hands. I think <laughs> a collector of some things, but that's okay. <laughs> what about little David? Do you think he's a collector? You know, I think he is. And I think he sees it's, it's interesting what kids pick up on because I think he sees mommy constantly decluttering. Mm-hmm. Cause I do think it's an ongoing process. I think you can do a big declutter, but then you're always like having to maintain and especially right. with children. And you know, I used to kind of sneak the things out in the mm-hmm. night, you know, and that doesn't quite work anymore. Yeah. Cause he's, he's like, Oh enough. mom, like, where is that? You know, and he's looking for it. So I try to be more sensitive to him. I don't sneak it out in the night anymore. And, Aww. you know, or he would see like, I love giving like a you know, a hand me down to somebody, mm-hmm. and he'd be like, "Mommy, I I had a shirt just like that." You know, <laughs> oh and I'm like, "Oh so yeah, cute, <laughs> he's very observant. very observant. Yeah, he's very very observant." So, so decluttering number one thing to do to to change your life, change your space, absolutely. And in feng shui, there's a thing called um, well, it's not really a thing, but it's moving twenty seven items in your space and that really switches up the energy. We've talked about this before Mm -hmm. and it's just a great way. 27 things, move them around. You're shifting. Maybe you're moving, you know, a stack of, and and it could be decorative items, but it could just be, you're moving it out of the space, clutter and, and things like that. And I do, I do think, you know, people love to text me and tell me, oh gosh, I just, you know, I cleaned out my closet. I think they want a little pat on the back, which I love to give. I love to give that encouragement. So I'm like, that's amazing. Like, don't you feel great? And they're like, I feel great. Like I could tackle something new, you know? So I love that for people. Sorry, I'm creating notes for us. Yes. But yeah, I... I've tried the 27 things, mm-hmm. but I don't, here's my question. And I'm sure there's people who are mm-hmm. ever listening. They're wondering the same. Do you have to do it all in one time? Um, no, I don't think so. And some people are like, you want it to be intentional, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I think just the act of, it's kind of a prompt because I think anyone's like, oh, I can move 27 things. It's not and, as easy as it sounds. Right. But mm-hmm. yeah. Especially if you don't have a lot of things. That. Right. Right. <laughs> Like you, because you've like, done a good job. I'll move that rock to the <laughs> to the right a little. Yeah, but sometimes it is like I love to like shift my plants around the house, or you know, just kind of you're shifting, you're breaking up energy that's stagnant. Because everything, one of the basis um, points of feng shui is that everything is energy. Right. Everything, everything. holds energy. Right. So you have to be aware of that. And if something maybe holds negative energy, like pay attention to that. You know, there's amazing um, amounts of things from exes and mm-hmm. stuff that I mm-hmm. see in people's homes. And I'm like, you know what? Let you that, got let that live. Like, let that go somewhere else, you know? Um, gotta let it go to let it flow. Let it go to let it flow. Yeah, That's right. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> we were saying that for a while, for sure. <laughs> Um, oh, yes. Another thing. Okay. So you're decluttering. Mm-hmm. Another thing is our homes are supposed to be super supportive of us and we need to fix, fix things in the home when they're broken. Yeah. And that's got it. That's hard nowadays because things are so expensive. So it's like, you gotta, you gotta pick and choose. Yeah. I would say, okay, if you're picking and choosing, never let your light bulbs just be out, like keep those lights which I am guilty of that because I have a bathroom light. Um, one, you know, there's a vanity light, yeah. a vanity light, and one of them is out. Why? Oh gosh! It, well, is, that, is it a like very interesting size bulb? Yes, and you know, finding light bulbs is not that easy. No, no. I, you know, I want to put this out there that like getting the correct <laughs> light bulb for your light fixture should be a little easier. <laughs> I agree. And I don't know, you know how we you, make that happen. You, you, you know those battery stores you drive by and you're like, yes. how do these people stay open? Yes. It's because of the batteries that nobody can get. Yes. So it's like, is there a light bulb place like that? Yes. I, well, I think, doesn't the battery place have light bulbs? Oh. I think it does. I think it does. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I could totally be mis- mixing that up. But yeah, so light bulbs are hard. So I'm working on that. But 
keep your light bulbs fresh, which with LED, it's so much easier. Mm -hmm. And for some reason I have bought LED lights that still burn out. I'm like, aren't these supposed to be a lifetime? I'm not a fan of like the bright white light. So I think the LED is a lot like that. Yeah. So I'm just like, I like the old school. Oh, you like, you like like a soft, yeah. Edison bulb or like a soft white. Mm -hmm. That's a whole nother conversation because (laughs) light bulbs. Yeah. I'm just going to say light bulbs can be tricky, Yeah, but make sure your lights are, you know, your lights are fixed. Um, door handles. Mm -hmm. So interesting. Like you've had like a a door handle, just like slightly loose, Mm -hmm. you know, tighten that baby up. That's a good one. Yeah. Because in feng shui, that's like losing, like everything is, um, kind of representative of something in your life. Mm -hmm. That's, that's how feng shui works. So So like losing control, losing control, losing your grip on life. Like Wow. The lighting can be like feeling burned out. Like, are you feeling burned out? Kim and does this to me out. all the time. <laughs> What's when that? She, you start talking about these things and I'm like, oh my gosh, you're so right. Yeah. Like, she does this to me all the time. <laughs> like we'll have conversations about things like this and I'm like, what? Yeah. What do I have to do to change this? Yes. And then okay, I go so home and I change everything. Leaky, leaky, like faucets, yes. anything leaking with water bad because it's like the, the energy, the abundance is continually flowing. flowing. It's flowing out. out. You don't want that. Huh? No. Well, I'm glad I don't have any of these things. That's so good. Mm -hmm. A plus for you. Thank you. Austin's pretty good about keeping up with the house. That's good. If something's broken, he's like, got to fix it right away. He's like, not, he's a very, he's like, he gets on it right away. Yeah. Which I love. Yeah. For very particular reasons, but that's another podcast. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I love that about him too. I know. And I am actually- He's a stand-up I, guy. I'm going to fix that light bulb today because, you know, that's the thing. These are the things we we try, we put the intention behind it to keep it in going in the right direction. So that's just my Keep my the lights goal. on. Yeah. Keep the lights on. <laughs> Don't. Keep the toilet seats down. Yes. Keep that. that that's kind of- Yeah. Just keep them down um, is another just good habit. Until you told me that. Well, it's like a cleanliness yeah. thing, but also yeah, just anything with that running water is, you don't want that abundance to leave the home. Right. So yeah. I like the way it looks too. Yeah. With it closed. Better. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's the point my, of a lid if you're not going to close it. My pet peeve being in real estate is when I see real estate photos and they, there's a toilet in the shot and the and toilet seat is up. I'm like, no. <laughs> you're like, cannot use, cannot no, use. Can, <laughs> no, do not do that. <laughs> oh man. I know. It's I true know. though. Why have a lid if you're not going to close it? The whole point is to close it. They made it for a reason. Yeah. 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 It's not to sit on it. It's yeah. to close it. People close, close your, lids. your lids. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, feng shui. Let's move into the bedroom. Oh, these are, I love this conversation. You do? Yeah, we've had this one before, and I'm yeah. so excited to have it again. <laughs> so, in the bedroom, you really want the focus to be sleep and sex in that bedroom, you know? Mm-hmm. So, how are you going to get yourself there? And believe it or not, like, I think. Having clean sheets that don't have holes, Mm -hmm. stains, that is like number one. I think the bedding, you know, I think people kind of, they get comfortable. They've had a comforter for a long time or whatever it Mm -hmm. is. And it's, it seems simple, but that makes a big impact and a big difference in your bed, in your room. I think it helps with sleep. I mean, you know, when you have fresh sheets put on the bed and the you're best. like, I, I really think you sleep better. I do. <laughs> I do so, too. Yeah. So put those fresh sheets and bedding on the bed because it, it really makes a difference. And I would say, I don't know, I probably switch mine out at least, at least once a year, you know, and I have extra sets of sheets. That's like a whole right. other conversation, and but yes. keeping yeah. that bed space fresh and clean and without holes, super important. Mm -hmm. Um, I think in the bedroom, creating that very yin. So in feng shui, it's like yin and yang. Yin, very soft energy. Yang is more vibrant, like the red, like the fire. 
Um, but keeping that space a little bit more yin is better. And believe it or not, I mean, I say that and some people will be like, duh, but <laughs> I've been in people's homes. I was in a client's home and they had a neon sign above their bed. What? Lit up. That was kind of like the what lighting say, in like their room. The, like the whatever's. You know, no, oh, like, like, oh the, my God. like the couple's name. Yeah. Oh my God. That'd be amazing. <laughs> but no, it did not say that. Um, but a neon gosh, sign. You know, I forget what the sign said, but let's get it on. Right. I mean, that would be perfect. Cute. <laughs> That's cute. <laughs> kind of cute, but not. But no, but I would but say like, like no, why a neon sign? Yeah. It's no kinda... neon signs in your room. And I get it. You're turning off, to, turning it off to go to bed, but I just think keeping that space you know, just more chill, more chill vibe. No electronics mm -hmm. in the room. That's a hard one. That's a hard one. So that's like the biggest debatable thing is, you know, most people now have a TV in their bedroom um, and that is a deal breaker for some people. So, but if you cannot have a TV in your room, that of course makes for better communication, better everything. Yes. <laughs> Better everything. Exactly. You know what you're doing in there. Yeah, you're not you're watching like, TV. Exactly. You're going into bed to do a couple, couple things. A couple That's things. That's about it. <laughs> <laughs> so keep that vibe right guys, you know? <laughs> yeah. Um, so you could, if you do have a TV in your room though, you could like cover it, you could like cover it with like a, a nice, sheet, like, like a sheet, sheet or, something. or like something to kind of keep it, um, blocking. Yeah. Keep it blocking. Keep your cell phone out of the bedroom if you can. It's challenging so nowadays, hard. huh? So hard. So now I'm trying to, I, I, for a while I would like have it on silent, but it would be there because I would use, you know, as use it as an alarm. That did not work for me. So now it's in another room. It's on airplane mode. So it's trying not to like generate signal or whatever. And I have like an alarm clock in my room and it's kind of, it's away from my bed. It's mm -hmm. not by my head either because I realize that probably emits a little EMF as well. So we want to keep like low EMF space. And even my husband will try and wear those AirPods in my, in the bed. And I'm like, get those things <laughs> out of here. <laughs> yeah. You're, 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 yeah. No, no AirPods you're in the bedroom. No. Anti. Anti. Nope. Thank you. The word. He's like, okay, slipping. okay. So yeah, no AirPods in the bedroom. No electronics if you can. I know a lot of people with teenagers tell me I can't, I can't not put the phone in the room. And I get that. And I'm not in that phase of my life. Right. So I don't know like what I'll do then, but I just think being more aware mm -hmm. um, and keeping that a technology free space is best. I don't know. Do you, where do you put your phone? Hmm. Oh, I don't want to know. Yeah, you don't want to know. <laughs> and we have a TV in the room. Yeah. It's a lot. Well, I have a TV in the room too. Yeah. I'm not going to act like I'm totally perfect, but because that was a non-negotiable with my husband. Do you use TV in your room a lot? You know, no, not really. I mean, I find that my husband is using it in the room and I'm like putting, you know, laying down with my son and getting him to sleep. And then by the time you get in there. It's yeah. It's lights out. I watch very little TV. Yeah. Yeah. We, I think we like bond over shows and things. Yeah. So we have special shows that we watch together. And so the, that's kind of the thing, but it's, yeah, we don't like scroll. Yeah. Yeah. No scrolling in the bed. Right. Mm -hmm. We try, we did for a while and then I was like, we got to stop. Got to stop. Or gotta put, put it down. Put a time, you know, we're not going to have phones in the room after mm -hmm. 8 PM. Right or whatever the time may be. I think that helps too. And I think if you're both on board, it you can make it happen. So what else about the bedroom besides those couple of things? Well, I mean, I love a little diffused essential oil or like a nice candle, non-toxic, of course. Yes, of course. <laughs> you know, like just setting the mood a little or just keeping it like a very zen. If you're going to be in there like reading a book, just... When it comes to furniture job. though, what do you suggest for furniture for a feng shui bedroom. Okay. So a solid wood headboard is always like more ideal. Okay. It's very supportive. When you think of, 
you know, sometimes you see headboards and there's, there's no like, like a metal headboard or right. something. It's like cold. Whole, metal is not a great material to have for a bed. And also if there's like holes in it, like just think of it in a, you know, the mindset of like, this is representative of support for me. And so something with like spaces and everything is not ideal. So okay. something, something wood, solid wood, something solid wood and being in the command position is important. What do you mean by that? Not always ideal. I mean, not always possible, mm -hmm. let's say, you know, given what your space is, but you, the command position is that you are facing the door. Great. But you're <laughs> great, <laughs> but you're not in line with it. Great. Yeah. Yay. I love that. A plus yes. for Jess. A plus. <laughs> yeah. And so sometimes like there are, um, you have, uh, like a window, there's windows to work with, mm -hmm. you know, different things. So you just try your best. You try your best to, to put something in, but it really does. Like I was in a hotel room and you walked in and the back of the bed was, it was weird because the bed was kind of in the middle of the room. I know it sounds strange and it was actually kind of a cool setup, but the back of the bed was facing the door. Oh, that's bad. And I was just like, I don't think I didn't sleep well. I just was like, I feel uneasy in this space. It's weird because, but if someone were to walk in, you know, you're, it's, you're at a blindness there. So that's why we say command position. So you're like, you're Ready. facing the door. I mean, and, and just not in line with it mm -hmm. because that being in line with the door is like that chi is like coming in the door. So, so that's like another important, important thing. Um, so yeah, so that's kind of a little, some tips with the bedroom. Um, another one that I like love is, and I think someone, women will be like, Oh my gosh, really? Like, this? <laughs> but it's to have gratitude while cleaning your space. So have the gratitude of, and I have reframed myself. This is something that I have done because I would wake up in the morning and be like, oh my God, there's a sink full of dishes. My kitchen is a mess. You know, this is typically after I've gotten my son off to school, right? And I'm like, Oh, like I, you know, just got, I've got so much to do, but now it's kind of my favorite time of the day. I put on some music or I put on a podcast. I clean the kitchen. Maybe it takes me 15 minutes. Right. And I just have gratitude for being able to just say to myself, like, I have a beautiful home and I love my home and I want to keep it like clean. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so just like having that gratitude, um, for cleaning my space and tidying. And if I think you, you a lot, you know, let's say you can a lot, you know, 15 to 30 minutes a day of cleaning, tidying and having just make it your time, you know, do something fun. What is it you like to do? Like, do you like to listen to music? Do you like podcasts? Right. Do you want to put on? I hope you do. <laughs> yeah. I, <laughs> listen, a matter of fact, what? <laughs> Listen to us, <laughs> listen to us while you have gratitude for cleaning your space. But, um, you know, so that's just reframing, reframing that I think makes a big, big difference. Mornings are my favorite. You do And I like actually mornings. like to tidy up. It's like a part of my, I have to do it every day. Make yeah. my bed, clean the space, pick up things. I haven't really like put it out there that I'm like happy about it yeah. because it, because it doesn't make me feel like annoyed or anything. Yeah. I'll, I don't have kids yet, so I don't know how it's going to affect that, but right. I'm always kind of feeling like I, I'm happy about the morning. Yeah. Just like another day. Yippee. Ah, see, I love that. Yeah. Morning. I'm not, I'm not really a morning person to be honest. I had to reframe that for myself. Mm. And I get up early now because the dog, the husband, the kid, but if, if Kimberly Han were just to be on her own, <laughs> Kimberly Han would probably sleep, sleep in a little bit more, you know? Mm. So, so I am reframing that, but I, I've always been a bed maker. Mm -hmm. Thanks mom for Same. instilling that in yep. me. And I, they say more successful people make their bed every morning. Yeah. Just throwing that out there. I know. It's like your first little win of the day, you know, that you're getting that done. And I love that. I love that too. <laughs> I read that somewhere as well. You know, it's a new, new wave of things happening, yeah. you know, on social media, et cetera, where it's like day in the life. And it's always like, they start by 
drinking the hot water with lemon and making the yes. bed and stretching. And it's like, but those things really work. Yeah. It's not a do. lie. The morning ritual. Yeah. And there is, I think he's a army or a Navy guy who wrote a book about, and the whole premise is making the bed first thing in the morning is what he talks about. Just and so being, I love that. Making yourself a schedule. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and holding important. yourself accountable. Like, yes, you did this, it's your first win. Like, let's get up and go kind of thing, yeah. I think is the... The, uh, the mindset there. I like that. On the subject of cleaning is, this is another one. And I, I think, you know, maybe some of these things, people don't really relate to the topic of feng shui, but all of it works together. And these are all things that you're doing in your home to make it have the best, you know, that good chi mm-hmm. is um, lessening your toxic load in your home. Yeah. This is a big one. This is like huge. This is like a big rabbit hole of information. And a great topic. It could be its own topic. It could be its own topic. And this is something that um, I will say being diagnosed with an autoimmune disease, toxic load is a big part of the conversation. Mm -hmm. So, and detoxing and things like that. And so I don't have all the stats as far as like we're, we are exposed to so many chemicals, you know, I I forget the number, but it's like so many chemicals per day. So, and, and we are encountering those out in the world every, every every second, every, every every place we go probably. Right. Mm -hmm. So my whole thing is let's lessen our exposure as much as we possibly can in our home. And so that is something. What does that mean? So I think it's taking it like one small step at a time. And maybe the first thing that you do is, is not allow shoes in your home. This is something huge. Yeah. I, I've, I remember you saying that at one point, you just take them off at the door, take them off at the door. And you know, when I really started to do this and it could, because it makes total sense is that when I lived in Utah, I lived in park city Nobody wore shoes in anyone else's home. I think primarily because you've got snow, there's like salt from the, the, you know, people are putting salt out to like melt the snow and stuff like that. So the shoes really get wet. They're like muddy, grimy. So everyone takes their shoes off. Mm -hmm. I think in Florida, like growing up in Florida, I don't know, we are barefoot a lot. Mm -hmm. So like maybe it's not as much of a concern, but you know, I don't know that I really thought about it as much. It just seemed like more natural to like take your boots off at the door. Right. So to speak. Right. So I really got into the habit of that. Now, um, when we came back down here, you're like more running in and out of the door a lot. And so I think we got a little lax on that, but, um, and this is something that's circulating more. I see people talking about not wearing the shoes in the house, but I think it's, I think it's something that we really do need to evaluate. Right, because and there's a lot of things that you drag in from. A lot of outside. things. Bugs, parasites. Parasites. I mean. Dirt. I mean. Bugs chemicals, and, pesticides. Chemicals, pesticides. Yeah. And then your pets. Yeah. That's another thing with pets. If you walk your dog, like I started to wipe. I mean, I haven't had Kaya for a while, but I started to wipe her paws off when she yes. would come inside. Yeah, that's a great, I think that's a great way to- Because mm-hmm. she's in the grass and I know. Like the poor thing licks her paws and I just makes me I nervous. I know, I know, I know. Pets are like a whole, whole other, other thing, thing because yes. it's like so much. But I yeah. do think maybe, you know, lessening your toxic load mm-hmm. can start with keeping your shoes off at the door. I think that's a big one. Um, secondly, the second thing I decided to tackle- well, kind of two at the same time, but the second thing was the laundry detergent. Yes. Because I have very sensitive skin. Yes. And in fact, before I got diagnosed with autoimmune, I was having like really bad rashes. Turns out, I think most of it was from what I was eating, but I, that prompted me to change my detergent because I thought, oh, I'm getting these rashes. Mm -hmm. Like maybe that is a part of it. And, and it probably did have something to do with it, but I, I changed and I was using one that I thought was like on the cleaner side. And then you like go down the rabbit hole and you're like, oh, but they have which one fragrance. I made sure I could like call it out, but I was using like seventh generation. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I thought that one was a good one, but I think I've like upped my game Mm -hmm. with the laundry. It's not a terrible one, but I heard that the only good one they have is the lemon 
because they oh. actually use essential oils in that. Okay. There's this yeah. guy, Flav City. Okay. Follow him. Oh, Flav City. Okay. He's awesome. Uh-huh. He goes around in the stores and he talks about like the ingredients yes. and like what you're actually consuming or using. And he said seventh generation, the lemon, they use actual essential oils, but the lavender. Oh, um, see, I was using the lavender. Right. Because it smells, I mean, what do you want? What do you want? Lemon smelling shoot clothes? I, I don't know. I but know. the lavender is is not, it's all, it's natural fragrance, which is not, now we know because everybody's, you know, everything's so readily available that that's not real. Yeah. Yeah. So it's natural. Fragrance is a really like tough thing. Um, so I started using Molly Suds. You use Molly Suds too. I started using it last week. Oh, no. And do you like two weeks ago? Um, I do. I yeah. think it's the best one I've used. That's yeah. that's the cleanest. And I think the the scent of it is great. It's peppermint essential oil, which yeah. I think people are like peppermint, right. like what? But you barely um, can even smell it. Yeah, I don't like think I, you can really smell it. I'm yeah, <laughs> you don't. You're not smelling like a mint. No, you and, know, walking around. But we, the the sheets are white and they're super bright still. Like we don't yeah. use. I'm not. I'm not using bleach. Yeah. Well, there's like an oxygen bo- booster. I think. Mm-hmm. Um, or am I mixing that up? But I think Molly Suds does have something like that. Uh, I really like their product. So that's a good one. Um, and then cleaning products, which, you know, I do have a wonderful cleaning little mini team that comes in, but I did have to say, okay, this is, yeah, I, we've got to use my part. products. Yeah. And, and I do a great deal of cleaning on my own too. So I just... Um, we, we had to make the switch and it was kind of difficult, but I try and use like as most, as most natural things as possible. So like, so like on the floors, I just use vinegar and water, have them use that, but there is a really good company and I listened to a podcast about them and I thought it was really amazing, but branch basics Okay, and they have like a cleaning concentrate. And then you add that to, uh, water, different bottles Mm -hmm. for whatever you're going to use. And then you use like varying degrees of water versus the cleaning concentrate, but they give you like a whole guide and that has really changed. And that one, that one has the oxygen, oxygen. Yes, it does. Yeah. Yeah. They do have a laundry version. Yeah. They have a laundry version. I mean, it's just the concentrate and then you add the booster. Yes. Yes. But I really like that. I haven't ordered that one yet. My neighbor just ordered it and she's She's pregnant. She's trying to change all of her things and she yes. can't stand the smell of it. But I think that's because she's pregnant because it doesn't smell bad to me. I like it. Yeah. Yeah. My whole thing is, I don't know why they continue to let people buy plastic bottles. Yeah. Like so that's there like is, a whole nother. There is the option to get plastic or, or glass. Yeah. But it's like, why give us the option if you're health, like you want us to be healthy? I know. Always try to go glass. Like if you can, right. Mm-hmm. Um, yes. I know that's another hard thing, but I would say the cleaning products, the laundry detergent, using like the vinegar and water on the floor, taking the shoes off before you come inside, um, kind of eliminating the fragrances. Like I didn't wear perfume for a long time. So when I was pregnant, when I had my son until he was like, I don't know. I mean, really until like last year, I was like, Oh, maybe I could start wearing perfume again. Well, I went down the rabbit hole. (laughs) I remember this. Yes. Of, um, information on that, because I know that typical perfumes and stuff bothered me always my whole life walking Mm -hmm. through the, the perfume section of the mall I would get like an instant headache. Me too. So I, I didn't know. I mean, I just didn't really think about it, you know? Yeah. Um, and now I'm like, well, I can't put, I actually did try to use just kind of a mainstream, you know, perfume. Mm. Did not work out well for me. Immediately had Immediately had a headache. Mm. Yep. Um, even like skin breakouts and stuff. So I found two that I really like, uh, Henry Rose, which is Michelle Pfeiffer's brand. Pretty cool. Um, I didn't know that. Yeah. She's done a lot of research on that. So really like that product. And then dime is another that I found that I really like. I heard of those two. I haven't used either one. I use clean uh, perfumes too. Yeah. Well, the dime has a, I know you like Santal 
uh, yeah. 33. Well, dime has like, uh, a, a, a dupe. Yeah. A dupe. It's called, I think it's called, I sent it to Paige actually. <laughs> Paige is here. Hey, and, uh, and I, uh, it, it was Tuesday night, Tuesday date night or something. Oh. Is it good? Did you order it Paige? Yeah. She goes, is oh, that Santal? And yeah. I was like, oh my gosh. And it's like a fraction of the price too. So, Just shout yeah. out. So I, <laughs> I use by, by Jane. Okay. Um, and that the one, one that I use is <clears throat> Rosie by Jane. Okay. Um, and it's all clean, natural. It's extremely light. I, I have found that I either have to have something sandalwoody yeah. or barely there. Mm, like mm-hmm. people that, if someone smells me, they're like, you smell like a baby. Like you, that's what they oh, always say. Baby. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I have it on right now and I barely, I can't even smell it, mm. but other people can smell it on me. And mm-hmm. then I use Dossier, which is another brand, a uh, clean brand. And they have a Santal 33 dupe. Oh, okay. And uh-huh. it's just called Sandalwood. And then I also use Riddle. Okay. And that's an oil. Oh, and the riddle and the by by Jane Rosie by Jane they both smell very like they're exactly the same mm, almost. Mm-hmm. But there's nothing like the the oil that you can get at um, at Whole Foods like the roll on oh, oil. Oh yeah, like the essential oils. Yeah, nothing like it. I love that too. I mean, I, I'm definitely into the essential oils, but I did feel like I wanted some. I don't know. Something like different. Like a perfume. Yeah. Yeah. Like something to spray on. I think I'm more like essential oils, daytime kind of running out the door. And then right. at night I like a, a perfume. Like a perfume. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I agree. So you have some questions for me, I, I think. Do. Yeah. Um, so we had some people. Yeah, so there's some questions from followers. Okay. Um, so just a little backstory. I do, I run Kim's social media and we have people writing all the time into our DMs and uh, we have- Sliding in. Sliding in. (laughs) And we have a few questions. And so one question, the first question was, I work from home. What are some things I can do to have a more productive workspace? Okay. Productive workspace. So sometimes people don't have a designated space and some people are working from like their kitchen table, which I totally get. So I would say just like a couple things that you can do if you don't have a workspace, let's say, um, put yourself in command position, always face the door, but not in line with it. Right. You don't like, it's just putting you in more of a power position. Um, keeping that space clutter free, so if you are working from your kitchen table, do not leave it on your kitchen table, Got which it. Yeah, like put sense. it on like a separate, maybe you have like a little separate cart that you can like tuck away at the end of the day, kind of clear that space. Declutter. Declutter. Mm-hmm. Keep it, I think in an office setting um, is very important to keep it clutter free. So if you do have a designated office, again, command position is best. And in fact, I saw this with my husband. I changed the the direction of where his desk was in our previous home. And, and he was like very resistant to it as people can be, you know, you're like, but I'm like, no, let me, we're going to open you up, Mm -hmm. Uh, open, open you up towards the door, not in line with it. And totally changed everything. Added a chair, added some plants, like really raised the vibe. Open the shades in there and like let the natural light in. And he was like, Kimberly, I swear I'm like working. I'm like more productive. And I'm like, I know, like, you don't have to tell me that. Like, I know. (laughs) Just gave him all that energy. Yeah. So much chi. Yes. So much chi. So people feel supported, you know, by family, children, you can have, you know, pictures of that on your desk. Um, you could put some essential oil in there. You could have some crystals if you're into that kind of thing, like abundance yeah, type man. crystals, you know, um, <laughs> la- or I'm not lavender. Um, amethyst is a great one. So, you know, just think about support. So if you are in an office and you have a space to have artwork or something behind you, Pick something that makes you feel powerful, successful, abundant. And with my husband, the case in point with him, he is a hunter. He loves like, he loves being in the wilderness and and doing all that. So he had like this giant 
picture of a big elk. Mm. Like, and, and he loved it, you know, and you think about just the symbolism of that. It's like strong strength. Yes. So that's a tip for the office. Love it. Okay. Question two. I have some dead corner space on a wall outside two bedrooms. What can I put there? So if you have oh, a dead, I, know, I see, I can, yeah, it. kind of, I wish I had a photo, um, of that. Cause she did send me, send in a photo, but I would say if there's any kind of dead space, think about storage. If there's something you need to store, can you, can you have some kind of shelving or maybe it's a bench with like hidden storage underneath mm-hmm. it? Like what can you put there? I think everyone needs more storage. So Always. If there's something that you can store there and it looks, you know, it looks nice, then great. If you don't need to store anything, why not add some, add a plant, add something, some greenery in that space, you know, um, that will always like boost the chi in, in the space. So, you know, one of those two things, like a little storage or maybe shelving or display something you love, Mm -hmm. you know, make it, make it a spot where you can put something that you really love to look at. Right. That gives me some ideas. Kind of transform it, transform that dead space into something that makes you happy. Mm -hmm. All right. Number three, I have a brown thumb when it comes to plants. Which plants do you recommend that are easy to care for? Ooh, that's a good one. Okay. I, I know some of the answers. Yeah, yeah, you know. <laughs> <laughs> You've been around me long enough. So uh, it's funny. I just went to Gaverney Gardens in Jupiter, love which I it. love that place. And uh, they had a lucky, so a ZZ plant right. is typically like a recommendation. But they had a lucky ZZ plant that said literally on the description, if you have a brown thumb, no way, get this plant. And I was like, a give, lucky me, give me three. Yeah. Give me three lucky ZZs. Do they look very similar? Very or? similar. Very similar. I wish I could compare them right now, but the leaves, like if you look at the ZZ, typically I think the, the, the basic ZZ is like a Raven ZZ and then there's a lucky ZZ. Yeah, like slightly different, right? Just like a little different. Yeah, the, it looks like the, uh, like the actual leaves are round, and the yeah. regular ZZ they're kind of like a pointy at the top. Okay, I guess that's like that's your determined your names. determination yeah. of the difference there. Yeah. But a lucky ZZ says if you have a brown thumb to get one of those. Lucky ZZ, um, Raven's easy. Snake plants are mm-hmm. super easy. Um, they seem like you can't kill them. like. You can't kill a, a snake plant. No, I they don't think you can. No well, you know what. how you, you know how you mess it up. My dog was like destroying mm-hmm. mine, and she was biting off the the tops. Mm-hmm. You also want to check and make sure plants are not toxic for dogs. But mm-hmm. I don't believe a snake plant is. But she was like biting off the tops of the. Mm-hmm. the so the point of the snake is is so she kind of destroyed those. But, yeah, and also uh, I heard if you overwater, yeah, yeah, like I water mine once a week. Yeah. Saturdays are my watering days. Yeah. Have a day and stick to it. Yeah. Don't overwater. Okay. Okay. Those are good ones. Yeah. And number four, I am in my car all day long. Is there any way to feng shui your car? Oh, I love this one. I love this one because you don't really think about feng shuiing your car and people's cars get, I mean, trashed, trashed. Mm -hmm. And you should look at mine right now because I have stuff like thrown everywhere because of my crazy morning this morning. But, um, you want to keep it as tidy as possible. You've got to declutter your car. And I always tell people like when, if you're going inside for something, just grab a couple things, you know, you've got probably empty water bottles. You've got your kids snacks in the back. Like also I love to carry a little, I have to bring it in to charge it every so often, but bring a little handheld like vacuum. I love those. I love when I see TikToks for that. (laughs) I mean, that like makes my world go round. I love it. I love it. So like a little, you know, like vacuum it up, zip, zip. Yeah. I like to spray some like essential oil, like abundance spray mm. in there sometimes. Um, you can usually get those kind of at like crystal shops or whatever, but like make it smell nice. You know, just think about how you would raise the vibe in your home. I'm not suggesting like drive around with the plant or anything in there, but you know, just kind of sure? keep it organized, keep your center console organized you know, put some care and love into your car because we're in our cars a lot actually. So 
you should give it some love. You no, know, and even and even now, I'm I don't if you're not sensitive to essential oils and the scent, mm-hmm. they even have the diffusers for the car. Yeah, yeah, it's start great. diffusing. They, yeah. You put it right in the car in the cup holder. Yeah, it def- like literally diffuse. I mean, I don't know how like sanitary that would be with the steam or whatever the water and the. You know, I've never used one of those actually. Yeah, and you also yeah. they also have those ones that you can hang or put in your in your AC duct where you put the essential yeah. oils on the little pad now. Yeah. As long as it's just essential oils yeah. and not any of that crazy, yeah. like smell disruptor when you're in an Uber and they have oh, the trees hanging the and I'm like, I can't, I can't like roll down the windows. I cannot be in here. Well, when know? I first moved in with, with Austin, sorry, babe, <laughs> he had glade plugins everywhere. Oh no, no. I, no, he left for work probably the second day I was there. And I threw him them all away, threw them all away. Yeah, he was like, yeah. what happened to, I'm like, do you know how toxic those are for you? They are toxic. And you have a dog? No way. No way, Jose. I know. No way, Jose. Sorry, Austin. Yeah, he's okay. Yeah, he doesn't care. He's like, good. He's easy. Yeah, yeah. He's the best. <laughs> so, okay, any more questions? Nope, that's it. No, All that's four. it. Okay, yeah. okay. Well, thanks for listening today about giving you some feng shui tips for your life and hope you enjoyed it.